Case closed. Now, an excellent breaking news. Big update for free speech, which we, I mean, can you even believe this is happening during this administration? A good day for Peter Redd. And this is because it's coming from Australia, not from the U.S. We just had Jennifer Marahasi on the show. We were talking about the Peter Redd case, how he was sacked from university after he went against the mainstream dogma in Australia that all oh, the reefs are dying and being bleached and burning up. And he went out there and actually went out there and he said, no, they're not. And he is one of the most respected and peer-reviewed scientists. And he just went against the grain and they said, you're fired. Well, he actually won an appeal and then it got overturned again in the local Supreme Court or something like that. And he then got re-sacked and they said, no, you can sack him. It's your freedom of speech. But it isn't because there are clauses at university that say that there is integrity in individual research and it doesn't matter what you research or what you find you're allowed to tell us your results and as of today just hours ago australian government the highest court the supreme court which according to this article seldom sees cases now if you don't know about peter ridd peter's dismissal for saying that because of systemic problems with quality assurance work from the university's Coral Reef Studies Center, it was, an, it was untrustworthy, and his subsequent travails did not go well. No, he got sacked because he said they can all suck it because they're not doing actual science. They're simply writing papers that are book reports of propaganda to get pats on the back. <coughs> well... What may be less immediately appreciated is the significance of today's court's decision. The high court does not agree to hear most cases in Australia. They consider cases that have a wider legal implication. And this case has the widest legal implication I've ever seen to protect the freedom of speech from scientists that want to say something that goes against the consensus, which, by the way, has nothing to do with science and everything to do with assholes. I mean, uh, dogmatists, pardon my French. Peter's legal team focused today on the academic intellectual freedom clauses in most university enterprise agreements. And guess what? The courts were like, yeah, you're right, and they're wrong. Peter's case will be heard later this year. And in the meantime, today's ruling not only represents a hopeful sign for academic freedom and for free speech in Australia, but also strikes a blow to the put down used to dismiss the credentials and credibility of all those who question environmental absolutism, including Diamond and many other people who have been subjugated to demonetization and the disenfranchisement of what they're saying. My credentials are just as good as any climatologist. In fact, they're better because I have a very limited time frame when I actually believed in the consensus. When I actually delved into the facts, they struck me right in the face. And it was a disgrace. The disgrace is the manipulation of data, the homogenization of data sets to meet a narrative that is proposed and supported by governments worldwide. And this is the green agenda, which states that you create carbon dioxide Therefore, humans are bad, and climate is good, and we are destroying the climate because we are useless eaters that just burn stuff. Now, what they use is ice core data, like the Vostok, which you're looking at here, to bastardize the actual factual information. And what we've known, and what I've known in academia since the 90s, looking at these in high resolution, we can find that the ice core data shows a, a huge lag in temperature rise and then followed by CO2 rise. So the red line will go up and then the CO2 goes up after. Now what they've done is they've hidden this from you. You could see a little evidence here. The red spikes here and thousands of years later, the blue spikes. That's a lag time. That means the blue did not cause the red. And that's what everyone in the world believes. CO2 drives temperature. But Joe Nova has uncovered some of the facts and has put, broken them down in layman's terms for people that are interested. And there have been high resolution studies, specifically 100,000 to 150,000 kilo years ago, where they looked at those bubbles in the ice and they determined quite con conclusively 
that the temperature rises a thousand or more years before the CO2 rises. And you can clearly see it here. CO2 is dropping as temperature rises. Guess what happens to this yellow? It's going to go up eventually, but only after the temperature rises by a factor of several thousand or several hundred years. Those are the facts. Facts versus fiction. That's what we deal with on this channel. Will you be a believer in facts or will you be a believer in fiction? It's your call. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as well. Which will you be doing? We know what we're doing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Ask a good question. I always read every single comment. I know, that's insane. But that's the only way to do it. You do it the right way. You have integrity. You take the time. You respond. 99.9% .9 of YouTubers don't even look at the comments. They just pretend they do. Well, we have integrity at the channel. Become a Patreon. Share this with like-minded people. Share the knowledge. And be safe. We love you. And that's a boom. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. And we'll see you at the Petroglyphs in a day or so. No, 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 no.